I bet I've spent close to 80 hours on it altogether now. Just the sheer amount of time you think, okay, I'll just glue some candy on this. I didn't realize how much time it would take. But it, it really does take a huge amount of time and energy and like a lot of focus and making sure that everything is working. And it's just this giant thing and you've just got this empty slate that you start with and then it's kind of like a puzzle because not all the candy pieces are symmetrical so it's, you know, you just have to kind of move things around and... I had the ball almost completely done and when I started adding the characters to it I had to reshift things and recover things. The amount of everything that it takes I've had to reorder a couple of times and... Just the weight of the candy you don't think Candy weighs that much, but it weighs quite a bit. The balls started slipping a little bit at, at the top, and so we've had to reinforce that. And, and it's got to last for the full Christmas season, not just a week, and then fall off. One of my friends asked me if I could make her wedding cake, and I thought she was crazy because I'd never done one before. Um, but she had faith in me, and and I did that one, and then just kept going from there, and taught myself how to use fondant before the days of YouTube. <laughs> when you had to just hands-on, just get in there and figure it out yourself, and that's how I started, you know, working in that medium. So this was kind of an easy jump for me. I felt like because I'm used to attaching things to cakes with just water as glue, you know, um, whereas now I have actual glue. Currently, I, I, I really, I sculpt with fruit. Um, so watermelons and melons and pineapples and other things. I like to create little kind of scenes. Uh, last year, we were just in Macy's and I saw the sign saying call for artists and I was like, okay. Every year, me and my wife, we actually do an elaborate gingerbread house. Um, we've done like a shipwreck and everything like that. And I was like, I think I could do this. So I thought this is something that would challenge me at the next level. So I, I first applied to be part of the Macy's window display um, when a friend of mine, she's always trying to get me to do things I wouldn't otherwise do. And, and she sent me the link and she said, hey, you really ought to do this. And the fun thing is this year, the unveiling is on my sister's birthday. My sister passed away, but she was my biggest cheerleader with the cakes and things like that. So I just feel like it was meant to be this year. The theme of this year is Places of Utah. And um, I tried to focus on the three main, like kind of um, ecosystems of Utah. And then I tried to pick out areas that I really enjoy about Utah. Um, which is really hard because there's a lot. So I have a wetland area, um, kind of your alpine snow area, and then your desert area. I immediately thought of um, recreation because there's a family trip every year to Lake Powell and we're a big skiing family and you know, what's more fun than Santa skiing? <laughs> like I wanted to go from north to south to represent all of the areas of recreation, so I started at the top with the Golden Spike trains up north, and then, of course, the mountainscape with the skiing Santa, and then at the bottom, Lake Powell and the arch. It's a lot of sculpting, um, and it's a lot of kind of seeing things, seeing candy in non-traditional ways. Like, okay, this candy is perfect for a street or this candy's perfect for this pond or for hair. Seeing them in a way that's a little bit more creative. I'm used to someone just handing me an idea and having to come up with the creative design from there with my cake. So sometimes people hand me some pretty crazy ideas and I have to just come up with something on the fly. And so I felt like this was kind of similar. It was just, you know, an easier theme than I sometimes get. <laughs> Creativity, what it means to me is, it's actually is to create, it's to mold something into something beautiful and wonderful. And I hope that I'm, I'm doing that to a certain extent, that people will come and they'll see something that's whimsical and um, imaginative. I love creating things that are um, kind of mimic nature in a way. That's why my candy ornament is pretty much all about nature. I feel like everyone's creative in their own way. 
There are just certain people that thrive on that creativity. I would say what inspires me is just everything around me. And creativity in general to me is, is just something that comes from something inspired you. I see something and think, I want to go home and try and paint that, or I want to try and go and sculpt that. So I think everybody attacks creativity from a different angle and a different perspective, but I think everybody has it innately in them. I, I think it's important to carry on traditions and carrying on those things because I think that's what kind of unites families together, um, is those little things that you do together. Um, and creativity is part of that. I think had my parents not really fostered that, I don't think I think I would have been in a completely different, different headspace, I guess. I think it's just one of those, you know, bucket list things where, where it's just so fun to be involved with something that's been going on for this long. People get so excited when you talk about the candy window displays because they're like, oh, I remember going to that as a kid and, and I'm so excited that I can tell people that I know one of the artists and it's just been kind of fun to get so many people involved with it that have been excited to come down and see them.